Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP Certified Instructor. On this video, we are covering Cisco Cybersecurity Operation, and this is exam 210-255. And we move on to section 1.2 and 1.3 in this video. Section 1.2 of this exam says describe these terms as they are defined in the CVSS 3.0. So we need to know the terms about attack vector, attack complexity, privilege required, user interaction, and scope. And then as well as describe the terms like confidentiality, integrity, and availability. This is section 1.3. Okay, so we're gonna do these two sections. Um, now CVSS stands for Common Vulnerability Scoring System, which is open and free to industry for evaluating the seriousness of the software security vulnerability and is used in vulnerability management software. So you can go there, use it for free and check how serious some software vulnerability it is. So CVSS gives a score to vulnerabilities per the seriousness of the threat. The scores are computed considering several metrics. Scores are given between zero and 10 with the most severe score being 10. So at the end of the class, I'll do a small demonstration, but you can go there yourself and chase, check it out as well. So CVSS is owned and managed by FIRST, FIRST.org, which is a non-profit organization based out of the US that owns and manages the CVSS. It is not required to be a member of FIRST to utilize or implement CVSS. So you can go and use it without being a member of the FIRST, but FIRST does require any individuals or organizations give appropriate attribution while using the CVSS. Don't joke around, do it properly. And then if you're using it, please publish it. That's what it says. So first also states that any individual or organization that publishes scores following the guidelines so that anyone can understand how the scare was evaluated or calculated. So CVSS has uh, some metric groups, which we have to know about the terms. So uh, vulnerability is evaluated under three aspects and a score is assigned to the, each of them. So the first group, it's a called base group, which represent characteristics of a vulnerability that are constant over time and do not depend on user specific environment. So they're always the same, doesn't depend on what, what is a user environment. This is the most important information and the only mandatory information to obtain the vulnerability score. The second, the second group that we have is called the temporal group. This measure of ca the characteristics of a vulnerability, they might change over time, but not across user environment. So for example, the severity of the new vulnerability may be high, but later will decrease as patches, signatures, and other countermeasures are developed. And the third group is called environmental group, represents the characteristics of vulnerability that are important and unique to specific user environment. So we have the base group, which are always constant, they do not change. Temporal, which can change if as soon as we release new patches, the vulnerability uh, reduced. And then we have an environmental group. This all depends on the user environment. So the base group has two classes of metric, has an exploitability and impact metric. Exploitability, the feature are the exploits, such as uh, the, these, these are the features of the exploits such as the vector, complexity, and user interaction required by exploit. An impact metric, the impact of the exploit are rooted to the CIA triad, like confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So we look at the exploitability metrics, which are the, in the exam really looks at the base metric group, which you have to understand them. So first we have an attack vector. This is the metric that reflects the proximity of the threat actor to the vulnerable component. The more remote the threat actor is the, to the component that has a higher severity. The threat actor is close to your network or inside your network are easy to detect and mitigate. Now this is how far I, is the attacker from the component. The following are a few examples of an attack vector. For example, a malicious email attached or malicious link on an email, malicious web page content, a vulnerable or compromised network service used maliciously, a social engineering conversation by a threat actor done in a person or by phone, email, text, or instant messaging, 
to obtain the sensitive information from the user, i.e. such as credentials, date of birth, account information, social security numbers, and so on. So for example, attack vector, the first option that we have to choose, this is the calculator that we're going to use later on, I'm going to show you here as well. Um, so the first option we choose is the attack vector is in the network. The network, this vulnerability component is bound to the network stack and the attacker path is through the OSI layer three, like the network layer. So for example, the attacker is far away and he has to go through the routers to get to the component. So it's not on the same subnet. It could be from a remote location. The second is adjacent. Adjacent, the vulnerable component is bounded to the network stack. However, the attack is limited to the same shared physical or logical network and cannot be performed across OSI layer 3 boundary. Adjacent attack would be an ARP. For example, this is the attacker is already on your subnet, so it doesn't have to go through the router to get to your network. So a network is well, the first one was the network, which the attacker had to go through the router, different network to get to the component, while the adjacent is already on the same subnet, LAN for example. Local, the vulnerability components is not bound to the network stack and the attacker path is via read, write, execute capabilities. The attacker might be logged in locally in order to exploit the vulnerability. This is the attack is not on your network. The user is actually sitting on the computer. It doesn't have to go through the stack. It doesn't have to go through the network to attack. So it's stealing some data, for example. Or physical. With a physical access, requires the attacker to physically touch or manipulate the vulnerability component. Physical, for example, the attacker has to be there. The physically uh, attack, the, uh, uh, physically touch the component. So, yeah, network, far away, going through the different network, through the routers, and then you will have ACLs, firewalls, and so on. Adjacent doesn't have to go through the routers, but they still have to go through the switch to get to the network, to the component. Local is already on the computer. Is is it accessing attack there, stealing some hard disk or information or so on, or physical, well, physical touch the component. The second is attack complexity. The metric describes the condition beyond the attacker control that must exist in order to exploit the vulnerability. So here we have two, we have low and high. So low specialized access condition do not exist. An attacker can accept a repeatable success against the vulnerable component. So the attacker can access the same as it did before. High, a successful attack depends on the condition beyond the attacker's control. That is, a successful attack cannot be accomplished at will, but requires the attacker to invest some measurable amount of effort in preparation before the successful attack can be expected. So for example, I don't know, uh, think think of this, think of that like uh, an attacker is trying to go in secured gate. You know, we have a guard there, uh, you know, one of the, one of, every day there's a different guard. One of the guards is lazy. And so the attacker is, the complexity is high because the attacker has to wait for that guard that it doesn't pay that much attention. Low, there's no guard there. <laughs> okay, the next one is privileges required. This metric describes the level of privileges an attacker must possess before successfully exploiting the vulnerability. The metric is greatest if no privileges are required. So first, none. The attacker is unauthorized prior to the attack and therefore does not require any access to settings or files to carry out an attack. Here, the attacker needs privileges. He's unauthorized, unauthenticated. He has to get the privileges. Or we have low the attacker is authorized with privileges that provide basic user capabilities that could normally affect only settings and files owned by a user. It's normal user access. Alternate, alternatively, an attacker, attacker has with a low privileges might have the ability to cause an impact only to non-sensitive resources. And then we have high. The attacker is authorized with privileges that provide significant i.e. administrative control over the vulnerability component that could affect component-wide settings and files. Then we have a user interaction. This metric captures the requirements for a user other than the attacker to participate in a successful compromise of the vulnerable component. This metric determines whether the vulnerability can be exploited solely 
at the will of the attacker or whether the separate user or user initiated process must participate in some manner. So none here where the vulnerability system be, can be exploited without interaction from any user or you can have required where success, successful exploitation of this vulnerability requires a user on the other side to take some actions before the vulnerability can be exploited. And last one we have here is in scope, is exploitability metrics. metrics. This refers to the collection of privileges defined by computing authority when granting access to the computing resources. These privileges are assigned based on some methods of identification or authorization. So we have unchanged, an exploited vulnerability can only affect resources managed by the same authority. In this case, we have vulnerability component and the impact components are the same. Or we have changed, exploitability, exploited vulnerability can affect resources beyond the authorization, authorization privileges intended by vulnerable component. In this case, vulnerability component and the impact components are different. Then we have three impact metrics, which increase with the degree of consequences of loss due to the impact of components. Impact metrics components, they do include confidentiality, impact. The confidentiality refers to the limit of access to only authorized users. Then we have integrity impact. Integrity refers to the trustworthiness and authenticity of information. And availability impact. Availability refers to the accessibility of information and network resources. You understand, you learned it before from confidentiality, integrity, confidentiality, only the users who are meant to see it can see it. Integrity, it doesn't change. And availability, well, the word says there. So if confidentiality is or integrity or availability is high, there is a total loss of confidentiality, integrity and availability. Low, there is some loss of confidentiality, integrity and availability, and we have none. There is no loss of confidentiality, integrity and availability. The CVSS process. Met, uh, the CVSS base metric group is designed as a way to access security vulnerability found in the software and hardware systems. The CVSS process uses a tool called CVSS V3 calculator. This calculator is similar to a questionnaire in which choices are made that describe the vulnerability for each metric group. After all the choices are made, the score will be generated and numeric severity rating is displayed. The resulting score serves to guide the affected organization in the allocating of resources to address the vulnerability. The higher the severity rating, the greater the potential impact of an exploit and the greater the urgency in addressing that vulnerability. In general, any vulnerability that exceeds 3.9 should be addressed. The higher the rating level, the greater the urgency or remediation. Now I'm going to show you how to get there um, to the CVSS v3 calculator. So all you do is open your browser, search for CVSS 3.0 calculator and you get here. So this is your CVSS 3 calculator. And then we have here on the top, we have a base score and underneath, underneath it, like we have two, we have a temper score, temporal score and environmental score. But for this exam, we're going to just concentrate. We can fill these one, but the mandatory fields are on the base score. So we have to uh, put in to get the score here. So for example, the attack vector, what do we want to put? The network, is it far away? Does it have to go through the routers? Adjacent is on the LAN. A local is sitting on the local, uh, local machine or physically has to touch the machine to get there. So maybe, yep, this attack is a physical. Attack complexity, high or low? Let's say low. Privileges level, do, do we need any privileges? Well, the attacker, let's just say that he's got all the privileges he needs to get here. Does it need a user interaction? None are required. Uh, this is uh, running through the v, uh, VMware virtual machine, so it's a bit iffy here. But anyway, in your shouldn't see like this. Um, yes, there is a required, so you need a user to authenticate it. Scope, say unchanged, and confidentiality, well, none. Um, doesn't make any difference there. Integrity is none, and availability is none. So we have score 0.0, .0 so we are fine here. So let's say the um, attack is, is uh, from the network, coming from far away, and a 
complexity of attack is high, privileges level is none, user interaction none, so the attacker can just get in there, um, scope will be changed, and say the confidentiality, it, well, we'll lose the whole confidentiality, so you see the score gets higher as we write. Um, integrity, well, is the attacker will change everything. And availability, well, it's not going to be available anymore. So look at the score, 9.0. So, yeah, we have to address this very, very quickly. And then here we have a vector string as well, CVSS 3.0 vector. Availability, the network, attack complexity, high, privileged level, non, user interaction, non, and so on. You can see there the code there okay thank you very much for watching this video this has been um this has been the section uh, 1.2 describe the terms as they are defined in the cvss 3.0 and 1.3 the confidentiality integrity and availability please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe bye bye